So Gibraltar has become aware that the cargo that was coming to Gibraltar was destined to a sanctioned entity under the European sanctions regime, and therefore we were obliged to act. How is it decided that Gibraltar would take the lead on this? So this isn't the question of Gibraltar taking the lead. This is the question uh, of Gibraltar being the destination of this vessel. And when we are told that this vessel is coming to Gibraltar, we are told also by separate sources that uh, the destination is a sanctioned destination and therefore Gibraltar has to act because once they come into our waters, they come into the European Union, the sanctions bite, and Gibraltar is obliged to take these steps. The operation saw Royal Marines flown in from the UK. How is it coordinated and by whom? We have to understand that this operation, quite unlike another operation in living memory, is not Gibraltar handing over control to the British Armed Forces. This is Gibraltar being in control of an operation which has been supported by the British Armed Forces, in particular uh, the Royal Marines. So uh, different agencies have different roles. The overall entity in control of the operation was the Royal Gibraltar Police. The captain of the port sought the assistance of the Royal Gibraltar Police um, and he sought um, also that they should uh, detain the vessel. In order to do that, the Royal Gibraltar Police needed the assistance of assets which were beyond Gibraltar. They sought um, my consent for that assistance to be brought in. I agreed that it was necessary and they therefore were able to call in aid the uh, British Armed Forces, in, in this case the Royal Marines. Why was Grace One entering British Gibraltar territorial waters? Was it headed to bunker here or to use services in Gibraltar? So the, the ship was coming for a routing call, not for bunkers, it was coming to collect stores and spare parts. There was an incident at the runway a few years ago involving the relative jurisdictions of the Royal Gibraltar Police and the Ministry of Defence. Did any such issues arise during this operation and has the legislation that was introduced since played a role at all? So remember that the Armed Forces Act now sets out very clearly in a way that everybody understands in Gibraltar law what the separate jurisdiction of each entity in Gibraltar operating is and how they operate under that, ju that particular jurisdiction. So that has now ensured that we are able to interoperate in a way that is very efficient. Some will have heard the helicopter late last night. How and when did the operation unfold? So the, the details of the operation are not something that I can go into, but uh, people will have heard the helicopter at about quarter to two in the morning, and they will probably have heard it uh, no longer operating at about you know, quarter past two, twenty past two in the morning. Was the tanker found to be carrying crude oil? The declared cargo of the vessel is crude oil. Whether or not um, our sampling and testing of the cargo confirms it's crude oil or a different type of oil, fuel oil or refined oil, all of that is a matter which will have to be dealt with by the experts and under the auspices of the captain of the port. What happens now to the ship and its crew? So the regulations that were made yesterday set out in detail what it is that the process to follow now is. This is now uh, openly available. It was published yesterday. Within 72 hours, an application has to be made for the detention to be continued. There are periods of 10 and 30 days thereafter which kick in to enable those that might want to make claims to come to the court and set out their claims and for uh, the government, for, through the Attorney General and the Captain of the Port, to set out why we might not believe that those applications should be granted. Were the regulations backing up these sanctions necessary? After all, Gibraltar is still part of the EU. So the regulations were necessary because although the European regulation is still directly in force in Gibraltar, what these regulations do is they give us the ability to enforce this regulation. So this is the, the teeth that are needed once you know who you're enforcing against. So the regulations provide for me to be able to give a notice. And what I did yesterday was give a notice designating the ship as a ship that was, we considered, breaching the sanctions. So that's the, the legal regime that had to be put in place once we knew there was a, a potential sanctions busting going on. Is this detention something of a statement to the EU, an affirmation of its policies and values despite Brexit? No, this, this is an action that we are obliged to take under the existing legal order in Gibraltar because these rules are still rules which are applicable in Gibraltar. And look, frankly, if you look at what the reason for these rules is, which is to sanction the regime of President Bashar al-Assad, I think everybody in Gibraltar will agree that it's something that we want to be doing in the proper way when it's our obligation to do it. 
And does it serve also as something of a statement to the UK in the context of Brexit, reinforcing Gibraltar's value? No, this is not a statement to anyone. This is a statement of Gibraltar's uh, compliance with the international rules-based legal order. And those rules require us, they oblige us to act. This is not something that we chose to do because we thought it would be good for Gibraltar or we chose to do even though we might think it's not good for Gibraltar. This is what we are required under international law and European law to do if we have a reasonable ground to suspect that an asset, in this case a vessel, is coming through Gibraltar and it's being used to breach sanctions that apply in Gibraltar. But a useful uh, perhaps PR moment uh, given the context nonetheless. Well look, when you're looking at issues like this, PR moments are not going to be anywhere near in your mind. You're going to be concerned about the safety and security of the people of Gibraltar. You're going to be concerned about the safety and security of the law enforcement agencies that are going to be responsible for giving effect to this obligation. Um, and you can let other people make comments about how they think uh, that this reflects on Gibraltar. Yesterday the RGP and government had to allay fears over a security scare at the beach due to this operation. Are you concerned at the leak, given especially the potential for panic, and will there be any investigation? I don't think that you can extrapolate that there, just because yesterday there was uh, some rumorology in Gibraltar that there might be a terrorist attack on the beaches, that this has anything to do with what was actually happening. I mean, uh, I could think of many reasons yesterday why uh, all of that uh, Chinese whispering might not be related to what we knew was also going on, and we felt that this was about you know, preparations for island games that people had misinterpreted, the beaches are being used for the triathlon and there are operations going around to ensure the safety and security of athletes and bystanders and, and the population during the island games and I think that that is what people had misinterpreted not anything to do with this. Some more specific information was also being circulated. Look, in, in Gibraltar, if you look at the information that is going around, um, you might be able to conject anything you like at any time of the day on any subject that you might like. In your statement, you emphasise that Gibraltar remains safe and secure. Is this aimed at reassuring the public, given that this operation has involved Gibraltar to some extent with a major conflict? Well, I, I don't think it involves us in a major conflict in any way that we are not already involved. Remember that these rules are the law of Gibraltar since 2012 when they were made. But it's important when you're taking action, which involves, for the first time in many years, I, I believe for the first time probably since 1988, that the British Armed Forces act in support of the civilian police authorities, that we set out that that was required for a specific purpose, for a specific operation, but that, that they are not required to continue to provide um, safety and security in a way that the RGP and our other law enforcement agencies are not able to continue to provide in the usual way. Gibraltar has made the international headlines in relation to Syria. So today we're in the headlines in relation to Syria internationally, tomorrow we may be in the headlines in relation to another matter. But look, if you are part of the Western democratic world, if you're part of the international rules-based legal order and you support that, then there are times when, as you, for example, take powers under the 2006 Constitution, you also take responsibilities and obligations and you have to discharge those when the time comes. Will any potential effects from this operation be factored in at all into Gibraltar's security preparations going forward? Look, as, as far as I'm concerned, all of the law enforcement agencies of Gibraltar that were involved last night do a magnificent job assuring the safety and security of Gibraltar. I am satisfied that there are no concerns about the safety and security of Gibraltar and its people. I want to thank all of those law enforcement agencies, starting with the Royal Gibraltar Police, Her Majesty's Customs, the Captain of the Port and, and the Port Authority, of course, the Gibraltar Defence Police. I did not know that they were involved. They've been concerned that I did not thank them for their involvement. I thank every one of the law enforcement agencies for their involvement. And indeed, there are people beyond law enforcement who were also involved. And in particular, because I watched the action last night, the Royal Marines who went on board that vessel in a very dynamic operation done with uh, great discipline and in a way that ensured that they could deliver without any injuries whatsoever for Gibraltar the effective implementation of these sanctions.